you know, you can have a real big effect on hormone balance without touching hormones with phytoestrogens or anything like that, just by working on nervines and um, adaptogens. So, You're listening to the Labroma podcast with me, your host, Colin Quinn. At Labroma, we believe the secret to truly effective therapeutic plant medicine is by understanding our plant science and backing it up with evidence. And this week, I have a beautiful conversation with a very passionate UK-based herbalist, Hannah Charman. Hannah first became interested in alternative medicine when at only 15, she started seeing various therapists to help with a chronic fatigue syndrome that she thankfully overcome, but overcome in a very interesting way. She later trained in Reiki at the age of 16 and started using these treatments as part of her lifestyle going forward and it became her work eventually. She graduated in 1999 with a degree in Western Herbal Medicine and has practiced it ever since. Hannah currently sees clients and she incorporates health coaching, aerology, hypnotherapy into her programs and herbs are a huge part of the work she does and she specifically works within the space of menopause. Jump straight in and get ready to learn so much from Hannah. Hannah, it's lovely to have you on the podcast. Thank you for coming and joining us today. Thank you for inviting me as well. So you're in lovely England. We were just speaking about this before we went live. Um, in Shropshire. Yes, lovely. Yeah, it's really pretty. Good. Have you always lived there? No, it's the kind of place I've always wanted to live. Ah. And when I lived down south on the south coast, I kept saying to people, I need to go and live somewhere and there are hills and I can uh-huh. see what it looks like, but I don't know where it is. Mm-hmm. And eventually I found it. It's here. So um, oh, we've lived nice. here for two and a half years now and I absolutely love it. So it sounds like you're staying put for a while then. Yeah. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. That's good. Yeah. Let's talk about herbal medicine because you have a very interesting history with it. Um, what I love about reading about you, Hannah, and learning about you was that this has been your passion from you were literally in your teens, which mm-hmm. is pretty amazing. I was the same. I was really young. Well, it was the only thing I've ever done. And there's not that many of us. For a lot of people, it's their like second career or, you know, they pick it up through nursing or they pick it up through a, a first occupation. Um, mm-hmm. So it's really nice to find someone that it's just been their entire life. So tell me, what was it? Do you remember in your childhood or in, in your teens that got you interested? Um, it was a twist of fate, actually, as mm. these things often are. So um, I always wanted to be a vet when I was little. That's ah. exactly it was the only thing I wanted to do and I was very kind of blinkered to the idea of doing anything else. Um, so I was determined that I was going to be a vet come what may, but um, I don't know what it's like in other parts of the world, but over here it's extremely difficult to get into vet school. You've got to have really high grades. So I pushed myself really, really hard at school to make sure I got into vet school. And then on top of that, I had a different hobby every night of the week and on weekends And then one day when I was 14, my dad picked me up from school in the car and on the way home, we stopped at the shops because he wanted me to go and get something from the shop and I couldn't get out of the car. And in the space of five minutes, I'd gone from being perfectly happy, healthy schoolgirl to not being able to move. Um, And that was the beginning of chronic fatigue syndrome, as it turned out. So uh, I got taken to the GP and they basically said that I was making it all up. Uh, to get out of going to school and I needed to see an educational psychologist which was like the polar opposite of what had actually happened yeah because what had actually happened was I burnt out at 14 mm-hmm. at 14 yeah um so my mum and dad kind of left me for a bit to see if I get better on my own and it soon became apparent that that wasn't going to happen so very fortunately I got taken to see lots of different alternative therapists um, none of whom were herbalists, actually. There was a couple of homeopaths and a hypnotherapist and um, various others. And then once I was better, um, I had to kind of try and get through my exams. And somehow I won the French prize for GCSE French. Um, Brilliant. I didn't know I did that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I won a little book token. And with the book token, I bought David Hoffman's New Holistic Herbal, mm. um, which wasn't even that new by then it was still like well I don't know if anyone's got a copy but it's like a really old book Mm -hmm. mid 70s where they took the fin horn and they've all got like long beards and uh you know bad hair and it's the most amazing inspiring book so that's what got me into herbal medicine 
Um, and then at the same time, they happened to be set, setting up a degree course in Western Herbal Medicine at Middlesex mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. And I managed to get onto that. And the rest is history, really. It's like the herbs chose me more than I yeah. chose the herbs. But. And it's interesting that, so I have a couple of questions. Um, did your parents consider going down the medical route at 14? Or did they, when they sort of realized after watching you for a while, this was not going to go away on its own? Did they, did they like strategic, was that a conscious thought to go alternative medicine or w w where was their logic there? Do you know? I think my dad's osteopath had a hand in it. So he saw the osteopath once a month to keep himself out of a wheelchair, which is a whole other story. Um, but I, it was her idea to go and see a homeopathic doctor, first of all. And it kind of went from there, really. There was no other choice. It was either leave me sick on the sofa or go and see an alternative therapist. So what? what are you going to do we were just lucky that we were in a position to be able to go and do that so mm -hmm. yeah. our stories are quite similar and I probably have never mentioned this to the labrum or community before but I was 14 when I broke the bottom three bones in my coccyx playing football and the medical profession solution was you know painkillers anti-inflammatories you can't do anything with the bones in your coccyx you just have to let them heal and I was young when they were going to heal and it was fine and um but I remember coming out of the doctors with mom with a script and there was loads of drugs on it and she like anti-inflammatories painkillers all of those things and she ripped it up and she just said you're never going to take those and she mommy wasn't anti-medicine by any means she just mm -hmm. knew i wasn't going to take them and i wasn't anti it i just wasn't going to take medicine I, you know i had, had the last antibiotic i had i was seven so she was like mm -hmm. you're just never been your thing you're like no. a, a woman who's like in the fields all the time it's just not your thing um, and she found me an aromatherapist and a masseuse and a couple of different things like that. And I never really looked back after that. Mm -hmm. And I was around there nowhere near as chronic as your condition. Mine was a, you know, was a sporting accident and it was not by any means ever going to be a long term problem. Mm -hmm. Has the fatigue ever came back? It's threatened to once or twice. Um, I, I trod very carefully for a good few years after my illness and sort of over time I've done a lot of work on myself over the years so um I've lost that that sort of drive the uncontrollable drive that you have to push yourself beyond your own limits that's kind of gone now so I don't have the need for the chronic fatigue to put the brakes on me um and I'm much more aware now of when things are starting to go wrong and I need to fall back and stop so yeah good well let's talk about herbs for a second because mm -hmm. And I want to talk about one particular topic um, specifically, if you don't mind, and that's female health. So the reason I'm so fascinated by female health and especially female health and herbs at the minute is because there's so much noise being given now to certain topics of female health. And I mean that in a positive way. So yep. whereas in the past, menop perimenopause wasn't a thing and menopause was something that was kind of hushed under the under the carpet and it was nearly like shameful to talk about it and yeah. um, like loads of things like we can't even talk about our periods and people get squeamish which is mm -hmm. completely ridiculous and um, that's all changing which I am very happy about especially yeah. when I think of my nieces that are coming up and we can all openly talk about you know when they have periods it'll be an open topic which is how it should be mm -hmm. it was not that way for us um, and one of the big things that I'm seeing happening alongside these conversations is herbs being suggested as support not necessarily as solutions which they can be but as supports for our hormonal imbalances and our hormonal cycles as we go forward are you seeing this trend and does it make sense to you that it's such a that the two are so strongly connected yeah i mean i'm i'm with you in that i'm really pleased we're talking about this much more and um davina mccall's been on tv a couple of times as well raising awareness so you know that's really good um, I'm finding that the HRT voice is much louder than the herbal voice, but that's only to be expected. Um, I would like to see a bit more balance, if I'm honest. I'd like to see, you know, women being offered lots of different options and sort of empowered to choose what they want to do themselves. There's, there's still a good proportion of ladies out there who don't feel that HRT is right for them for whatever reason. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of noticed the narrative edging a little bit more towards uh, you're broken, you've got no chance of getting through menopause without drugs. Uh, so form an orderly queue at your GP surgery if you can and, you know, get your HRT. And to me, it isn't like that. You know, there's 20% of women or so get through menopause without really even noticing. 
but mm-hmm. we never get to hear about those ladies. No, nope. um, my mom was one of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, it's it should be a choice, and we're not broken. It's a natural process that actually our grandmothers and great grandmothers, all the way back through the generations, right to the dawn of time, have got through one way or another, usually with the help of herbs and you know they've they've generally lived healthier than we live nowadays so to me in my experience both personally and professionally those who really genuinely need hrt are the exception rather than the rule but obviously it's more complicated than that because if you are having trouble and you do need something like to see a herbalist or a naturopath you need to be able to fund that because it's not available on the nhs and certainly in the case of herbal medicine it's not covered by health insurance either so it's not as straightforward as that. And I don't want to sound judgmental towards those ladies who really don't have a choice than to go down the HRT route, but it's... And that is a problem. Mm. That is a problem. The fact that it's, we don't, we just don't have access to it the way we do our, our drugs. Um, you mentioned our grandmothers have been through it and our mothers have been through it and women, we will all continue to go through it for the rest of days. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you feel that our modern world, and this is a bit of a big question, Hannah, so forgive me if it's too big, but... The, the modern world and all these massive external pressures we now have to be just perfect um, perfect and flawless while we deal with everything. Mm-hmm. Do you think that is putting much more pressure on us as we go through these kind of stages in our life or are we just making, are we just imagining it's harder than it is? I think it's putting us on a back foot. If you look how life has changed, let's say in the past 100 years, 100 years ago, women might not have gone out to work or certainly not for that number of hours. Uh, I mean, my grandma was, uh, she was a mum to two young boys when it was the early 50s. And she was the exception because she actually went out and ran her own business. And she was the main breadwinner. But back then, you know, most women weren't going out to work. And the husband was off out working and the wife was at home running the house and taking care of the kids. Um, And now we're expected to go out to work full time and do a 40 hour week and also run the house and take care of the kids. And yes, we've got the washing machines and the dishwashers and all the stuff to help us, but it's still really hard work, you know? And I think the ideal really is perhaps part-time work. And then if you want to raise your family without going insane or burning out, um, allow yourself enough time to do that and relax and take time for yourself as well. But by the time we reach perimenopause, most of us are sort of in our mid forties ish. We might have been putting the family and the career and everything else first for decades by then. And so it's no wonder, is it, that we we run into trouble when our hormones start to, to change. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah I think the lifestyle's got a lot because we're overstressed, overtired, undernourished. And, you know, you're expecting a lot of your body to make mm-hmm. this transition if it hasn't got the resources it needs. Yeah. And I think rest is the big thing there that you mentioned. And I don't think we talk about that enough The just being okay with doing nothing and um the italians have a word for it i'm not going to remember it now but the 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 italians have one word for the art of doing nothing and i think that we don't give ourselves enough time to do it and permission just to to be and and just do nothing let our bodies just rest yeah i i decided about three years ago that i was only going to work a four-day week and it's a complete game changer yeah we're a four-day week company yeah it's just makes such a difference it's a no-brainer one of the girls goes for c dips now every friday morning mm-hmm. like you can't do that if you work five days a week and you're not going to do it on a saturday because you've all of your errands to run the saturday and everything to do yeah. and that's a big thing so yeah. let's talk about herbs for a second is there any particular if you had to like pick your top five herbs for female support so i'm not thinking about conditions as such hannah like getting us through our day-to-day and supporting us as we talk about this busy life we lives we all run now is there certain herbs that are really useful as our caretakers it's so hard to choose I isn't know. it it's just impossible lemon balm is probably one of my favorites okay why um because it just knows what to do so if you sniff lemon balm it's so easy to grow in your garden it's very rampant so you'll have a whole garden full of it in a few years uh it makes really delicious tea if you pick it fresh helps you sleep if you sniff lemon balm it makes you feel uplifted and relaxed at the same time Uh, it's a really intelligent medicine it's really clever and it also calms your digestion down so okay it's nice 
yeah okay so lemon balm and i i drink lemon balm tea and it's so as you say it's so easy it will consume mm. the entire garden in no time and it makes good sorbet as well you can make really nice sorbet from lemon balm okay have to try that i've never done that <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what else have you got a number two alongside lemon balm? what do i use a lot of i use a lot of oats ah very good so the the tincture that i use is milky oat seed so they harvest it at the time when the seed is green and if you squash it it gets like a milky sap that comes out of it and that's really really nourishing for the nervous system so oats will keep your head above water if you're going through a period of stress it will give you extra stamina and it will help you to cope uh, with whatever's going on and that's why Oats were like the favourite food of the, the clansmen and women in Scotland and the miners. So in my part of the world, there's a lot of mining that used to go on. And Staffordshire oat cakes are quite a thing because it's miners' staple food. It gives them the stamina. Actually, the first sign of me going into labour when I woke up at five o'clock in the morning was that I was craving porridge. And at that point, I didn't know I was going into labour. It wasn't for a little while after that that I knew ah, why I was going to need that porridge. But your body knew. Yeah, it's like, yeah, get the oats down, you love. <laughs> You're yeah, for you a bit of hard work. Yeah, yeah, you, totally. You've got a day's work ahead of you. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And the adaptogenic um, herbs that have now become so trendy, we all talk about them. Do you um, support the idea that leaning into those adaptogenic herbs, especially when we're going through hormonal imbalances or changes in our cycles, is that is that, from your herbal point of view, a really good plan? Yeah, I can't think of many herbal prescriptions that I put together for menopause that don't have adaptogens in. I think every single one does. Because who isn't suffering chronic stress, particularly after the two years we've all just had? You know, that alone is stressful enough besides what might be going on in each individual's life. So, yeah, I mean, to my way of thinking, if if you look at it from a primeval point of view, your inner cave woman is going to perceive any stress as being you in mortal danger so what's not a good idea if your inner is is perceiving that you're in danger it's not a good idea to have a baby at that particular point so it is naturally going to disrupt your reproductive system to try and help make sure that you don't bring a baby into the world when it's not safe so it's no wonder that the two are so intrinsically linked and you know you can have a real big effect on hormone balance without touching hormones with phytoestrogens or anything like that just by working on nervines and um, adaptogens. So yeah, it's the adaptogen I use really depends on what's going on. So and how much space I need in the bottle. Licorice is really useful because I only use tiny doses of that. So it leaves plenty of room for other herbs. But you know, I like all sorts. I like the withania and the shakavaris and the um what else? Holy basil is one of my favourites. Really it's like so that. it's so um adaptive. It's brilliant. Mm, it's used yeah yes absolutely. yeah and um, you mentioned nervines how do nervines and adaptogens differ so adaptogens have a more general effect on the body so you can give someone an adaptogen and they'll come back to you the following week and they'll say i feel different but i can't explain how and it's because it's working on the whole body at the same time but all adaptogens work on the adrenal glands and the hpa axis so um basically what adaptogens do is help your body out of its stress response even if the stress itself the stressful factors are still ongoing um nervines work in a slightly different way because they have a direct action on the nervous system so the two work in partnership really nicely together um but the nervines sort of have a more calming effect or an uplifting effect depending on which ones you use on the nervous system itself it sounds like working with both of those categories of herbs would be super useful, especially when you're going through, when you're really, really living the symptoms of peri and um, like full menopause. Yeah, absolutely. Peri itself is stressful if you're having to deal with hot flushes and waking up six times a night or even more. Um, you know, that alone is going to put you on a back foot with the with the stress, isn't it? Yeah, or the moods. Just not, yeah. you're just being... Everything, mental health and your concentration and everything, so... Everything, and focus, everything. Yeah. Um, so you now specialise in this area of menopause and herbs. Yeah. Um, was there anything in particular, Hannah, that led you to specialise in this area? A uh, couple of things, really. I had my son, my first and only child, when I was 38. So I got the baby brain, like most of us do, and it never went. You know, I got to, you got to five years old, and I'm like, surely this baby brain should be gone by now. And it's just never, I won't say it's never gone. It has got a lot better, to be fair. Um, but 
yeah, things were never the same after that. How so? Was it concentration or what was it that was different? Mostly, yeah, mostly concentration and, you know, just doing daft things. We would call it brain fog in perimenopause terms and we call it baby brain in baby terms, but it's not altogether different. Um, so, yeah, I just felt like things never quite returned back to where they were. I feel like a proper normal functioning human being. Now, I had a bit of a blip when I had COVID just after Christmas and it took a while. That did affect my um, concentration quite a bit. Um, so I've got, thankfully, I've got back on top of that now. Um, but yeah, so I was sort of realised eventually that I was heading for perimenopause by then. Uh, and then I started to get patients who were having perimenopause issues of various descriptions and also often other chronic illnesses as well. So, you know, they've had a 20 year history of fibromyalgia, for example, and then Perry's come along and made it all 10 times worse. Um, and they were all getting on really well with the herbal medicine. And so they were sending more people to me. And by the time I'd kind of been doing it a while, I was getting probably about 80% of my patients were perimenopause. And it just just kind of came along, really. So Amazing. Yeah. Um, I love that you specialize in this field because I feel like um, we have lots of people will email us and ask for advice on lots of different areas. And mm -hmm. being able to send them to someone that's like being a generalist is great. And to an extent, we all are when we start out in these fields but actually honing down into an area that becomes, you know, your sweet spot, I yeah. think is super useful, not only for you, but also for the patients mm -hmm. that come to you because they know exactly what you're doing day in and day out. And I think that's, that's There's beautiful. such a need for it. It's, yeah. you know, partly because we have opened up conversations and we have become more open about it in the last few years, but it's not until you do that that you realise how women really suffer with it and, and have done for quite a while. Um, and it, you know, it's not right if you're expected to go out and work because you need two people's income in the household to cover the bills, which a lot of families do these days. And you can't, you know, you can't read a, a page of writing because your brain fog is that bad and you can't remember phone numbers or anything. How are you supposed it's to hard. function? Yeah. How are you meant to keep going like that? Yeah. And then you lead, it leads into those questions of, you know, how's our mental health and what are we doing to protect our mental health? And that's all too fragile these days as well, a lot of the time. Yeah, absolutely. So um, mm. there's a big need for it. Amazing. Hannah, do you see patients at the minute or do you do e-consults? Uh, mostly e-consults. That's kind of never, never gone back to face to face so much since yeah. COVID. Um, I should be opening a clinic quite soon. So you would yeah. like to get back into the clinic world? I would, but I'll, I'll always keep the online as well because yeah. it's just so handy for people, isn't it, as well? Amazing. Yeah. Well, we will link to your LinkedIn and your Facebook and all of that anyway. Thank you. Um, and by the time the podcast goes out, the clinic may be open, and if it is, then we can share those details as well. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your journey Thank and you. your work. And I'm glad the fatigue has never come back in a way that has slowed you since. Yes, it was. Um, I think it was all meant to be, really. My whole family's life changed. I forgot to tell you that actually I went to see a hypnotherapist and my mum and dad were so impressed by the hypnotherapist that they then trained as hypnotherapists. Ah. They both quit their jobs. So my dad had been in the police for 20 years and he stopped being a policeman and trained as a hypnotherapist. Amazing. And came out of teaching and, you know, that was a pivotal point for the whole family, me getting sick with chronic fatigue syndrome. So, you know, you just never know how these things are going to work out, do you? Have you ever looked back at veterinary and thought that still would have been interesting? You never know. Just no. it actually doesn't hold any appeal to me now amazing. whatsoever. Isn't that amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. just the, the turns in, in life, we just never know what's around the corner. It's fascinating. Right. I can't imagine doing anything other than herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, the stuff I do now, it's just me. Yeah, it's part of who you are. Yeah, absolutely amazing hannah thank you so much and thank, thank you for you. sharing your passion it's lovely to meet you and it's lovely to chat about these herbs with you and um, we will link so if anyone wants to reach out to hannah directly they can do that um and yeah hopefully hannah you get lots of people asking you lovely questions about the menopause thank you cool thanks hannah i hope you really enjoyed this week's episode of the labroma podcast if you did don't hesitate to go over to spotify itunes or google podcast you can rate and review this episode and you can also subscribe on any of those platforms so you never miss an episode again. Until next time, take very good care of yourself.